and start the broadcast. broadcast is now starting all attendees are in listen only mode welcome to today's webinar um, I'm really pleased to um, introduce to you Daniel Tiedelbaum who's um, works with the US EPA's TRI, TRI program and today he's going to be talking to us about uh, finding information using the their new uh, P2 data tool which uh, looks like it has some pretty neat applications for uh, for data mining, particularly with regard to identifying technical assistance opportunities. So, um, Daniel, take it away. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Laura, and thank you for the opportunity to present. My name is Daniel Teitelbaum. I'm the Pollution Prevention Staff Lead for the Toxics Relief Inventory, TRI program, in EPA's Office of Environmental Information. And uh, like Laura said, I'll be talking about how to use uh, the new TRI P2 data tool and how you can use it to get answers to questions about P2. And hopefully uh, we can also have a uh, more of a two-way discussion toward the end uh, so we can talk about how the TRI program can best tailor our data offerings to user needs, particularly um, for those of you in the P2 community. So. As a uh, quick uh, overview of what we'll uh, be talking about, I'm going to start by just uh, you know, giving a brief summary of TRI and our P2 data just to make sure uh, we're all up to speed on the background. Then I'll talk about how to uh, find P2 data for an individual facility using our P2 tool. Uh, next, go into um, some ideas for how to use TRI to identify technical assistance targets, this being an area where um, we have some ideas. Uh, but where input from uh, this group can really help shape our future directions. Um, then we'll uh, get into how to use the uh, new P2 tool to identify effective P2 practices and the companies that have implemented them. And then uh, I'll briefly wrap up with some information that you might want to share uh, if you have interactions with TRI reporting facilities um, in advance of the upcoming July 1st uh, TRI reporting deadline for this year. Uh, so starting with uh, the overview, what is TRI? Um, in short, TRI compiles data submitted by industry on the releases and management of toxic chemicals uh, from certain facilities. So this includes information on uh, what each facility is releasing to air, water, or land, uh, what they're transferring off-site, and also what they're doing to reduce releases through things like P2 and recycling. So over uh, 20,000 facilities report to TRI each year, and they're required to do so because they meet three statutory reporting criteria, one uh, being in a covered industry sector, um, which is uh, you know, mostly manufacturing, but some of the other uh, categories you see up here as well. Uh, two, they have to have uh, 10 full-time employees or the equivalent, and three, uh, they must uh, manufacture, process, or otherwise use a listed TRI chemical above certain thresholds. Um, so for each chemical that uh, facility exceeds threshold, they must uh, submit a TRI report for that chemical. Um, in terms of what does this have to do with P2, uh, the TRI was significantly expanded by the Pollution Prevention Act of 1990, uh, which sets out uh, the hierarchy of waste management techniques that you see uh, on the right here. Um, under the PPA, the goal, of course, is for facilities to shift away from releases and towards more preferable waste management techniques, or ideally to eliminate uh, waste at the source. So under the PPA, what we do is we track each facility's progress uh, towards the PPA goals, and we collect info on uh, effective P2 practices. Um, so uh, under the PPA, we collect basically four types of info. So first, uh, we find out for each uh, facility, for each chemical they're reporting, we find out how much waste they're generating for that chemical and how they're managing it. Uh, next, we collect information on two factors that influence these waste management amounts. The first being production ratio, so that um, let's say I'm using a chemical to make cars. The more cars I make, then the more of the chemical I'm going to use. Uh, so when I report to TRI, I have to say whether my car production for that year went up or down. Um, and by how much. So that's going to put the changes in releases or uh, other waste management quantities into the context of production. Um, but the second factor I'm going to talk about is uh, whether I implemented any uh, P2 activities, any source reduction activities. So we have um, codes corresponding to spe specific types of activities. Facilities are required to use these if they implemented any new P2 activities. 
uh, during the year. We'll get to that in a second. But then we also have a free test um, optional P2 field that many uh, facilities, a few thousand a year, will use to provide additional detail um, on their P2 or um, other environmentally friendly practices. And this is their chance to showcase uh, what it is that they've done uh, to reduce their uh, release of the toxic chemicals in that year. Um, here's a, uh, a quick visual visualization of that data. I'll, uh, I'll be showing you in a moment how to get to this in the, uh, the new tool. Um, but basically, this is how um, a uh, facility's data would look for uh, an individual chemical. Um, the, uh, the bars represent what they're reporting each year. So first, like I said, the waste management quantity is broken down within the four um, categories of the waste management hierarchy. The goal is that these bars will ideally be going down over time, or at the very least, as you see here, shifting from you know, less of the red releases and more of the green uh, recycling or other more preferable techniques. Um, so that's the, the underlying TRI chemical data. Uh, then we have the production index represented by the, um, the line here. Uh, so in this example, this is a semiconductor uh, manufacturing facility, so presumably that's uh, tracking the level of their um, number of semiconductors that they're producing. Uh, the third piece of information would be uh, source reduction activities. This facility in 2008, you see they had a, uh, a drop-off in waste, and they used one of those uh, codes. Some of these codes, like you see, are not going to be that... Uh, descriptive so we know, okay, they made a process change uh, and uh, their, their TRI numbers went down. Um, and then the, uh, the last type of thing is what here I called the, the P2 essay, that's that optional pollution prevention information field. This year they didn't provide all that much uh, description, they, they sort of just described what you can see um, on the graph itself. Um, for 2011 they provided a little more, they actually used uh, two uh, of the source reduction codes, then in each case told a little bit about what the, uh, you know, the change was and um, uh, in, in each of the, the two different cases that led to the uh, reduction. Um, so this slide I have just a few more examples of um, kind of how you can see how the codes and the, uh, the free text optional field work together. So on the left are some of the example codes. They fall into other broader categories like raw material modifications or process modifications. Um, so these are the uh, what's required to be reported if um, if a facility implemented any of these activities. Uh, but then you see on the right, in these cases, facilities provide a lot more of the, the sort of useful detail about who, what, when, where, and why, how uh, they made the change. So like knowing that uh, Raw material substitution was made. You know, it's nice, but you know, specifically, uh, you know, switched from fuel oil with uh, B50 uh, to a product that is 50% vegetable oil. Then you know, kind of exactly what they did and uh, and what the results were, reducing the air, air emissions. So one of our focuses um, as part of our uh, our P2 work has been to encourage more facilities to um, complete. Uh, this field by doing doing more on our end to um, showcase these uh, good news stories, uh, you know, P2 achievements that they're reporting. So just some, some data. So you have uh, uh, the idea of the overall level of uh, availability of this kind of data. Uh, we get about 70,000 forms each year. So in 2011, um, about 7-8% uh, of them uh, enter newly implemented source reduction activities uh, using uh, codes in, in what I've noted here is section 8.10 of the form. Um, nearly half of those actually filled out the section where they provided description that was uh, way up from previous years when it had been more like you know, 15, uh, 20 percent. Um, and just to, to fully explain the interactions between these two fields, uh, some facilities actually fill out the, uh, you know, the optional free text section without uh, putting in codes. Uh, the reason that, that this is is that that section can also talk about ongoing P2 activities in addition to newly implemented ones, and it can talk about other um, sort of eco practices, you know, recycling, uh, pollution control, et cetera. So uh, to sum up this overview, um, what are some questions that uh, here I can, can answer about P2? Uh, the first being have toxic chemical releases and waste management quantities uh, gone up or down over time 
at a particular industrial facility, you know, or for sectors overall. Uh, then second, uh, we can provide info on were the changes in releases driven by changes in production, or were there P2 practices that played a role. Um, third, um, you can uh, use TRI to find out what practices have other facilities in a specific sector implemented, how much progress have they made. Um, and most generally, TRI can give you a sense of what P2 practices have been most effective overall and which companies implemented them. So these are sort of questions that we expected you know, our data users to have. And in developing our new uh, TRI P2 tool, we've tried to make it easy to get answers to this type of question. Um, so this uh, next section, I'm going to talk um, about uh, one thing that you can now do uh, through TRI tools, which is to find P2 data for individual TRI facilities. In um, you know, the PDF that uh, I shared with Laura, and I don't know if, um, if Laura, you shared this with the group yet, but um, in that, I used um, you know, some screenshots from the tool to illustrate how to do this. So you'll have that later for reference. Um, for now, I'll do sort of a live demo. Um, yeah, and while you're pulling that up, um, I, I am going um, to. Actually, I while while you're pulling that up, I am going to send out um, a link to the slides um, after in a follow-up email after today's webinar, along with the link to the archive. So. Okay. Yeah. Great. So, so it'll um, be nice to see this live, though. Sure. Yeah. This is um, how you would access this data live. Um, this is the, uh, the new TRI pollution prevention page, the URL of epa.gov slash TRI slash P2. It can also be accessed from the TRI homepage. Um, this is sort of the, the one-stop shop for information about our P2 data and uh, also for accessing it. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is um, you're using the TRI search to find P2 data for a specific facility. So this is actually the standard TRI search in EnviroFax, EPA's uh, environmental data warehouse. Um, so this is, uh, you know, a basic way to get information on a TRI facility. You can, you know, type in a specific facility. What, uh, you know, more interest to a lot of our data users is to do a code search. And I had one that I had typed in earlier here. Let me just make sure I'm doing the right, right one. So I'm going to, let's say I'm in uh, zip code 14580. So and then this will just give me a list of TRI facilities. What's new here is that now, uh, for any facility, you can get their uh, P2 information and in addition to the sort of standard uh, your TRI reports about releases, uh, transfers, et cetera. And uh, this will be faster or slower depending on the time of day. So the facility we're going to look at here is a um, Xerox facility. And this first page you're going to see is one that um, we're going to be looking for input on because we want to make it easy for, um, for data users, as soon as they've identified a facility of interest, be able to get at the data they want. So right now, what you'll have here is a list of chemicals and whether there's uh, P2 activities reported in a given year. Um, so the that's because our data is available at the chemical level. So I'm going to, here I'll just pick one chemical that there was P2 data for the past couple of years. So that's something that um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click on in this case. But we are considering you know, ways to upgrade that page to make it easier to figure out you know, which is the chemical that um, I want to look at uh, to make more of an inviting uh, user display. So that's, that's something we'd appreciate input on. But so here's the, the basic. Um, you know, pollution prevention page for facility and chemical. At the top, you know, where the facility is located, information about their sector, the company, um, and which chemical we're looking at. You can also use this drop down to switch to, to look at other chemicals for the same facility. Um, and then here's the uh, basically the heart of the TRI data. It's the same thing I showed you in the PowerPoint, but now you can see how you can generate it live for any facility chemical combination. Um, you have the uh, you know, the bar charts showing their uh, sort of P2 um, results, P2 performance. 
You can also add the information on production. You can also normalize uh, the waste quantities relative to production, which is a particularly useful thing here. You see 2009 numbers went down, but that's because that's when the slump was in the economy. Um, so if you look at a normalized graph, you're going to get a more even distribution. So you see a, you know, a, a somewhat of a downward trend over time. Um, and then another thing on here is uh, you can see where the facility uh, stands within the waste management hierarchy and uh, how that compares to others in the industry. You can also use a link to go find more uh, P2 activities for the same uh, industry chemical combination. Um, and then years will be lit up if there were P2 activities reported, so 2011. Uh, this one talked about exactly what we had just seen on the graph, the way that they uh, began um, redirecting waste of this chemical uh, to uh, solvent recovery, to uh, recycling. Um, and so they talk about the environmental results and also um, you know, how they actually save money by using um, you know, recycled uh, inputs instead of uh, virgin materials. Um, also on this page at the bottom, uh, you can see all of the sort of uh, activity codes and uh, descriptions listed out for the different years in which they were reported. So that's the that's the basic um, you know facility chemical level P2 data. And uh, I'll get back to the tool in a little bit and some of the uh, you know broader types of searches you can perform. Um, but for now, I want to talk about some ideas for how to use uh, TRI to identify technical assistance targets. And this was um, you know, what I think was an interesting topic that, uh, that uh, Laura suggested would be of interest to this group, because it's something where um, you know, we have some ideas for what are the criteria that uh, you would look at, but where we could really benefit um, from uh, info from uh, you know, all of you in this group. So some of the the ideas we thought of are, you know, what are the criteria that uh, that TRI could help with that would be relevant to uh, selecting uh, technical assistance targets, whether that be, you know, individual facilities or companies, or whether it be finding uh, industries or chemicals to focus on. So the two sort of general categories we thought of are, you know, greatest environmental impact. Obviously, that's, you know, you can do the most good where there's um, the most impact to, uh, to reduce. Uh, so TRI has information relevant to that uh, in terms of uh, release and waste management quantities. Um, but other factors that are important are, of course, you know, the toxicity of, of the chemicals and um, state and transport. You know, you're going to care more about a facility releasing chemicals to air than disposing in a subtitle C landfill, all things being equal. Um, and then the second type of thing where um, TRI could be relevant is uh, where might there be the greatest potential for source reduction. So TRI, um, you know, we think can be helpful in this way because TRI data will show more P2 progress for some chemicals or sectors or facilities than for others. Uh, that can, of course, uh, go both ways. You know, if, if um, there's progress being made for, uh, for some facilities in a, a sector, that means that there might be more potential for others to uh, do likewise. Uh, while on the other hand, if there are areas where not a lot of progress is being made, um, you know, that might be more difficult, but maybe it's also uh, an area where there's more need for uh, technical assistance. Uh, and the second uh, point here uh, that I thought would be of interest to this group is that uh, beginning with this reporting year, the data that will be coming in next month, TRI facilities will have the opportunity to describe um, barriers to uh, P2. Um, or indicate that they're seeking technical assistance, so that that could be a way to, you know, for them to sort of self-identify as uh, seeking assistance. Um, so looking at that first point, environmental impact, uh, here are sort of the different uh, metrics that uh, TRI has uh, related to that. So the overall amount reported to TRI will be the uh, the total production-related waste managed. Um, this is. Uh, you should both say billions. I'll, uh, I'll correct that for the, the version that I send out. But uh, total waste is uh, 22.8 billion pounds per year. But that includes you know, everything in the hierarchy. So when you're looking into um, you know, where is the most impact that we should be concerned about, um, 
you might want to focus on what's actually being released to the environment as opposed to the, the other amounts. You know, the, this full pie chart is sort of everything that uh, to which source reduction might be applicable, but it's um, possibly the, the uh, releases that might be a better overall indicator. But even within that, most of the releases uh, that are reported to us are uh, land releases, often, you know, heavily uh, regulated and, uh, you know, carefully uh, handled. Um, so within that, you know, metrics like air releases or water uh, releases might be, um, you know, important in terms of um, uh, targeting. So let's look at how that would work with actual um, facility level TRI data. Um, as a side note, all of the, um, the tables I'm going to be presenting here uh, are derived from TRI.net, which is a, um, you know, a desktop application. And I can, if uh, you're interested, let me know. I can show how you would pull all this data um, if there's time at the end. Uh, and here what I did was I just grouped the metrics we talked about uh, at the facility level, but this could just as easily be done in TRI.net with a breakdown by industry or by chemical or by um, parent company. So I just wanted to, to briefly show how uh, these different metrics could be used. Um, let's say you're looking for um, facilities in uh, Illinois. So if, in this case, if you look at that total amount potentially, amenable to source reduction. Um, here's the facility that comes to the top. Here are the top 10. I've, uh, I've used the, the sort of purple bolding to show where, where numbers would fall in top 10 in other categories. So the first facility listed here, you know, way above the rest in terms of total waste managed, um, but 99.9% .9 of that is not being released to the environment um, in any way. So now I've sorted this by releases, so you see you know, some different facilities come to the top. The top three weren't, uh, weren't in the top 10 before, um, but these are facilities that um, they're, you know, almost 100% of their waste is um, being released to the environment in one form or other. So if you use this metric, it's going to lead you to a different idea um, of what's of concern. Though you'll notice that pretty much, again, 99 plus percent uh, of the releases here are being uh, uh, release to land. So another metric would be you know, air releases. This is where if you're thinking more about um, fate and transport or exposure, maybe you're going to look more at this type of metric. Again, a different um, top 10. You know, this facility at the top here didn't raise the top in terms of waste management, but it's pretty much all air releases. So that's, uh, you know, if you look at that metric, it gives you a different answer. The same thing with water releases. Um, two different uh, facilities rise to the top. You'll also notice that looking at different metrics, there'll be different uh, sectors. So here it's the, the meat processing that's leading to more of the water releases. That's uh, usually nitrates. Um, so and in addition to looking at um, volume, of course, toxicity uh, would be another concern. And so TRI tools at this point you know, can help a little with that. We have different um, classifications that uh, that you could use to uh, filter the data by. So here I showed how the, the data would look a little different if you just focused on persistent bioaccumulative toxics. Um, there's some other um, you know, categories that we provide as well. Um, and then you know, EPA provides other resources that uh, you can assist with toxicity weighting or risk screening or uh, exposure assessments, but there's going to be uh, caveats at, at uh, each of those stages. So um, I'll move on to the uh, the next uh, type of criteria here. Though, uh, if there's time uh, later on, I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts on sort of what's uh, you know most relevant of what we of what we just talked about. Uh, but in terms of uh, finding where is there most potential for P2, like I said before, there's kind of two types of things where TRI can help. Um, first, we have data on sort of discrepancies in the amount of progress that's being made by different, you know, uh, facilities or for different chemicals, for different sectors. Um, and that could be in terms of um, how frequently different sectors report source reduction activities and uh, how much the numbers have gone down. So I'll, I'll illustrate that point in a second. Um, 
Uh, but also, like I mentioned before, beginning with 2012, we're encouraging facilities to share more information about barriers to uh, barriers to P2. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how much information we'll get there, but that might be another resource in terms of identifying uh, technical assistance needs. Um, so here, uh, the point of this graph isn't necessarily to say which sectors are good or bad, but um, to show which ones tend to report more um, source reduction than others. And there's a you know very uh, wide range here. Um, some of the more high-tech uh, industries, uh, your medical devices, computers, electronics, tend to be um, rates approaching 20%, whereas uh, others that deal more with raw materials might be less than 5%. Again, this was just to show that um, you can use TRI to find out how much is uh, already being done um, in specific areas, whether it's by sector or chemical. Um, and then in addition to seeing how many activities are reported, you can see for a given sector or chemical or combination um, how much uh, numeric progress has been made. So this is one that, that stands out um, as a sector or chemical combination where uh, both releases and t overall waste have really come down, you know, 90% or so over the last decade. Um, so TRI data will show where where are the differences in these kinds of trends. Um, to wrap up this section, this is a little different from you know what I just talked about when, and what I'm going to talk about about the capabilities that our P2 tool can provide. These are things where. Yeah, we have data relevant to these questions, and we're trying to figure out the best way to um, present it. One new uh, uh, data presentation we do uh, think we'll provide is, uh, is a way that you can compare facilities within sectors. Um, so this would be an example of uh, toluene managed by textile facilities. And this uh, graph would tell you four things. One, the differences in uh, who's releasing or, or uh, you know, managing the most waste, uh, the data we went over before. Um, two, where do different facilities fit within the hierarchy? You know, which ones are releasing more versus uh, recycling? Three, and this isn't displayed here, but we'd like to have a, uh, you know, a trend metric so you can compare whether this is comparing facilities or industries, who's been sort of having the best trend of um, you know, decrease or increase per year. and uh, for when you're looking at all the facilities, you can see in each case, you know, what are the um, activities that have been reported. So this uh, one facility in this sector provided some information on uh, how they were able to get better results in terms of recycling. So um, the last uh, demonstration I'll do is how to uh, use the P2 search tool to identify effective uh, P2 practices and uh, facilities that have implemented them. Again, I'm going to do this uh, live. Um, I'll go back to our uh, main P2 page just to show how to get there. It's you know, pretty easy, the big uh, lit up box over here. So this is where I can you know, put in any criteria I want, and it'll just tell me you know, who's doing what in terms of P2 and uh, what have been the associated reductions in uh, toxic chemical quantities. So let's start with the um, the example we just looked at before, we know there's going to be a lot here for um, computer uh, electronic products and uh, lead. You can use uh, these drop downs either as you know a drop down, or you can just start typing, and uh, things will come up. You can type by NAICS code, you can type by CAS number, uh, description, and um, here I did uh, I didn't touch those bottom two fields. I want to see nationwide over you know, a, a broad range of years, what have been some of the uh, practices that have been reported that have led to what we saw was 90% uh, you know, or so decrease in lead and lead compounds for this industry. And um, yeah, the server definitely seems to be having uh, general issues this afternoon. But the more um, parameters you put into that search, the you know the more you narrow it, the more uh, quickly you're going to come up with results. So in this case, 
the way these results display is they list the facility, and where they're located, they'll tell you which chemical they reported P2 for, in which year, what were the releases the year before, and uh, what were the releases uh, the year that the P2 was reported. And it'll give both um, any source reduction activity codes um, and the description. So here they're talking about a, a lead-free wave solder machine. Um, and actually, if um, you know, I type in lead-free into this search box, uh, because I've done this before, I know we're going to find, uh, not if I put two dashes, but um, otherwise you can use this to search within your results. And um, so 160 of the entries uh, use lead-free. Um, so a lot of them uh, talk about the same thing. So you can see that that's one of the themes um, for what's been going on with this sector, uh, with this chemical. Uh, turns out without the dash, you'll get even more results. Um, but I'll show one other type of search that uh, you can do here. I'll uh, take these off, but let's say you just want to look uh, within your state. I'll stick with um, Illinois and a particular year. All these, um, by the way, you can do uh, multiple um, selections, but here I'm just keeping it simple. So let's say you want to see sort of just what's the overall story within um, Illinois for uh, for this past year, either because you just want to know in general, or maybe you want to find candidates for um, recognition or things to highlight. Um, this one ran a lot quicker. Um, I narrowed it down to hazardous air pollutants. So actually, what I'll do is um, you can change the metric to be either releases or total waste, which would be the total impact of source reduction. Since it's halves here, I'm going to do um, air release, so we can see you know who it's going to sort by this column, we'll see who uh, reduced their air releases by the most. It doesn't mean that whatever they said here necessarily contributed, but you need to have a way to find sort of the most promising stories rise to the top. So this one talked about, um, again, talking about recycling. Uh, that's how they got their reductions. Here's one that actually talked about substituting um, the less toxic paint. I think there's another one down here, again, talking about uh, paint without uh, chrome. So uh, this this facility, Hanna Steel Corp, 75-plus uh, percent reduction in chromium compounds in um, 2011 was the year we looked at. And what I did just now is clicked on that P2 Details button. This is uh, just another way to get to that same report I showed before of what's going on at the facility. The first page of search results just gives you, um, you know, a snapshot of uh, a bunch of different things at once. So I think this is a, this one's another interesting case. There's been um, a fair amount of progress over time. And even if you put in the production index, you see in 2011 that um, there was a you know, pretty big reduction in, uh, in total waste relative to production. Then if you click on that year, you see again uh, the, the story we just saw on the last page about how they um, substituted out the paint. So to um, summarize uh, how to access TRI's P2 data um, in the, uh, the PDF that Laura will send around, uh, these will all be uh, hyperlinked, so you can uh, click on them. But as a, as a quick reference, the uh, TRI national analysis, which I, I didn't really talk about here, but that's where you can find uh, overall trends in P2 and waste management, as well as trends for you know, specific sectors, chemicals. Um, parent companies, uh, that also uh, comes with uh, downloadable P2 stats and full list of P2 activities for 2011. Uh, the P2 search tool we just talked about, that's where you can find P2 activities uh, for particular search terms and gauge which practices may have been most effective. Uh, the TRI search is the standard way to um, identify TRI facilities in an area of interest, and then from there you can now uh, view the P2 information for uh, the facilities that you've selected. TRI.net um, 
again, we can talk about this if, if there's time, or um, feel free to call me about this later. This is sort of the most powerful uh, tool for uh, splicing different pieces of TRI data together, uh, but a little bit uh, more uh, complicated to use. Um, and lastly, my right to know our mobile application, which you can also access from your desktop, is now also uh, equipped to um, give you P2 information on uh, facilities uh, within a, a certain uh, zip code. Um, so the last thing I'll talk about, just because it's timely with our reporting deadline uh, coming up uh, July 1st, um, information that um, if you have contacts um, in industry to whom this would be of interest. Um, we do have for this year uh, new ways to report green chemistry practices. Uh, we've added uh, six new um, source reduction code options um, that will be more specific than just you know other process modifications or substituted raw materials uh, that will really get at um, green chemistry practices, um, you know, whether it's uh, finding a green or feedstock or reagent chemical, uh, reducing solvents using biotech. Um, so if you know facilities that would be interested in, in uh, promoting uh, green chemistry achievements, this is a, a new way that uh, that could be done. Um, and then in general, we're, we're trying to um, give facilities some tips on, um, you know, in, on uh, how to put in the type of information that uh, will be useful to data users and will also um, attract attention for purposes of you know, rec recognition or uh, highlighting achievements um, that, that deals with um, getting into, into the specifics uh, of the, uh, the kind of who, what, when, where, uh, why, and how of what was done. And for that purpose, again, this is just um, information that um, you're welcome to share with facility contacts. The URL is at the bottom, and this is um, available on our P2 page um, as just sort of a uh, a uh, in informational and uh, you know training uh, tip sheet um, that lets facilities know that providing this information is a way to uh, you know, publicly highlight achievements and then give some uh, tips and examples that they can sort of model their uh, responses uh, off of um, to make it easier to uh, figure out what to put in that uh, P2 section. Um, and uh, lastly, uh, my uh, Phone number's not on here, but my email is, and um, you know, Laura, you can send uh, the number out as well. Um, I'd be happy to uh, you know, talk later if you have any questions about how to access the data uh, that, you know, that we don't have time to or, or that you don't think of today. And uh, these are the, you know, the URLs for accessing the data that we talked about. So I guess uh, with, the, with the time remaining, I'd be happy to hear um, your thoughts on uh, the, uh, the, new, the new tool and uh, web page that we have now, as well as um, uh, questions or, uh, or ideas of what we can do to be helpful uh, going forward. Okay. Um, I have not received any questions through the, through the question chat, um, but uh, at this point, if anybody has a question, if you raise your hand using the Raise Your Hands tool, um, and go to webinar, I can unmute you and you can talk directly. Does anybody have any questions or have anything that they want to say? It doesn't look like it. <laughs> so um, just in case you're trying to get your thoughts together, um, I will say that um, I am going to send out a follow-up email um, with links to the webinar archive because I was recording it today, um, the slides, um, and, and a link to, the, to an evaluation form so you can tell us what you thought of the webinar um, because that's how we get better. Um, I'm also going to include, I'll include a link to TRI.net um, and to the um, Pollution Prevention 101 LibGuide, which um, I developed for, uh, for it's geared toward new pollution prevention practitioners, but it has a lot of links to resources, including a, an entire section in the statistics and data sets portion um, about TRI and the P2 data that you can get out of, and all the, all of the tools that are available for for getting the data out. Um, if you are looking for um, upcoming events, um, I recommend you check out the calendar on the Glipper website. 
Um, I'm adding stuff all the time. And then I did also want to mention that Daniel is also doing a webinar tomorrow on TRIP2 reporting. And it's geared at facilities, but if you're interested in signing up for that, um, it is on the Glipper calendar. Um, and that would be a, a good way for you to know what EPA is telling companies so that uh, you can help them if you, get, if you get calls. So are there any questions? Ed, Laura, would it be helpful for me to quickly show how you can use TRI.net to get those um, data tables that I presented? Yes. Um, I had one person say, we just want to go try it. Um, somebody wanted to know if the data can be bind by business sector or NAICS code. Can it be... Um, can it be... Um, yeah, in, um, in .NET, you mean, you mean to add the uh, quantities together? Well, I think I think they want to know if you can um, if you can get information about specific industry sector by by industry sector. So you know you can do facility level, but can you do, can you do it a little bit less granularly than that by using either NAICS or SIC code? Um, yeah. Well, what the um, you know, what this is uh, designed to do right now is for the activities is to search by um, oh by industry. By industry, so that would be okay. if you want to get like all of the, you know, okay. things reported by electric utilities, then uh, okay. you can do that there. If you want to actually combine the the data from the graphs, that's not something we have now, but if it's something that would be of interest, that would be good to know. Um, right now, like you could do that in TRI.net if you wanted to. Um, grouping variables is is you know what what you're breaking the data down by. So if you wanted to break it down by industry and you wanted to break down uh, for each industry. Um, oh, and I see, yeah, and I saw, actually saw, I saw NAICS on that list. Yeah, so industry yeah. is just a higher level, so yeah, yeah. you could do okay. um, like a breakdown of NAICS, and let's say you wanted to know um, how much is being released, recovered for energy, recycled, uh, or treated, as well as the, uh, you know, that total metric. You can run that um, and get totals by NAICS um, and uh, by uh, year as a category also. Okay, and then somebody else actually also asked if you could give a quick overview of TRI.net, which you've sort of done yeah. there, but maybe starting from the beginning. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, from the beginning. Um, I mean, obviously yeah, you download it, but. <laughs> <laughs> right, you have to download it, um, and then you have to, so from that link that you had, and then you have to, extract it because um, it'll come as a zip file so you extract it and then uh, you'll get the um, the actual executable file that you open and it has uh, a few different types of variables so grouping variables is you know what am I going to see the data for if I want to see the data uh, broken down by NAICS code I would select that if I want to get break it down to the level of the individual um, facility, then I could select that. Uh, TRIPID is TRI facility ID. Um, name would be a facility name. So you, you can put both of those if you want to see both the TRIPID and the name. Um, so there, there's a whole bunch of grouping variables. And then um, those would also include uh, the P2 activities down here. So first to say how I got the the data in the presentation, I was looking you know, by facility. So I went to TRIFID and name, and I selected both of those just because sometimes they'll be the same name for, um, for multiple facilities. So I wanted to make sure it was separated. Um, and then, uh, so I said, okay, I want the data for, for facilities, and what data do I want? So then there's a few different folders of uh, data to select, so I wanted the release data, and I wanted uh, the total release, um, but I also wanted the air and the water, just because that's what I happened to select there, but you can you know, select any of these categories. Um, then another, a separate folder here is uh, the waste quantities, which is a broader amount, like I showed with those pie charts, uh, so total production related waste managed is the full pie chart, um, the individual categories being releases, energy recovery, recycling, and treatment. So 
So for the, the uh, tables I did, I just wanted to use this total metric. The difference between that and this total waste managed is amounts that are uh, generated as waste due to one-time events, which are not going to be necessarily as amenable to source reduction. Um, and then, so in addition to selecting the data and selecting how you're going to break down the data, you can filter results, which is going to make it run a lot faster and let you focus on the area you wanted. So what I did before was I um, filtered by geography. I just filtered by um, Illinois. And, but you can filter by year, by types of P2 activities, um, or you know whether facilities had P2 activities at all. You could filter by NAICS. And that's different from, so grouping by NAICS using grouping variables means that it'll give you the data for each NAICS. Filtering means that you'll only get the data for a specific NAICS. If I only wanted to look at uh, thin fish fishing, then I would do that. I probably wouldn't find anything uh, if I did that, so I'm not going to do that. Um, hey, hey, Daniel. Ryan, ha Ryan Hamill had a question, and I've unmuted him so that he can ask. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Daniel. Can you hear me? Sure. Yeah, hey, I was just wondering, we had um, we'd been playing around with this a little bit uh, using it, and I think we might have selected too many variables because it seemed like it was freezing up or something when, like, you <laughs> pretty much selected everything. And so I was just wondering, is, you know, is there a limit to the number of variables? And then I guess it sounds like, you know, using the filtering variables, that kind of cuts it down quite a bit, um, you know, if there were any limits. Yeah, I'm not aware of um, a limit. It's just a more data, it's, it's looking the, the longer it's going to take. So for okay. example, up here, this is the one thing I was just about to show before running, is that actually this one I've only installed 2011 so far. If you do it across multiple years, mm -hmm. then it'll, it'll take longer, but that's what you would need to do to look at trends. Um, but yeah, filtering uh, helps to, to do the search. Let's see like how long this okay. takes. Okay, thank run. you. Like uh, that one, that one ran really fast. We were looking at only one state, only one year, um, and then yeah. So what I had done for the presentation was just to export this to Excel, and then within Excel you can you know do things, or even here you can sort by uh, sorting by releases. Um, that'll get you the same results that uh, that I had, except I had used uh, an earlier data set. This is more up to date. Okay, and I also have, um, John Hanzo has his hand up. Um, John, you're unmuted. Did you get your question answered, or did you have a comment? Uh, yes, I did get my question answered, and thanks very much. Um, uh, Daniel, can you go over again how to download that um, TRI net? I mean, you, you mentioned it, and I was typing things, so I missed the exact process of how to get that this information. So if you can go over that again, I'd appreciate it. Sure. Um, so from it's available from the TRI P2 page. So all you would do is click on that, and that's the same link that uh, Laura sent. You would hit uh, download, try net to your computer, and to begin the download, click on the following link. And I don't know if this is going to cause any problems because I already uh, have it on this computer. Um, but the keynote is that this is a zip file, so before uh, you can use anything from it, you'll have to uh, extract it. So just uh, open up the folder and um, select it and extract. Then you can tell it where it's going to go. Uh, so here it's going to my documents. It, it's already there, but I'll just uh, let it over. Okay, it's not gonna it's not gonna work because I have it open. But that's all you would do. And then wherever whatever folder you extracted it to. Um, you could then find it there, and um, if I just go to my documents now, uh, you see that's where I extracted it to, and then it's it's this, and then you can you know make a shortcut to that. So TRI.net in general is just it takes a little you know there's a few steps before you can use it at all, and then it takes a while to get sort of the the logic uh, to it, which is why we wanted to create a tool that was you know online could just quickly answer a, a few basic questions, but uh, TRI.net, once you have it, once you've figured out the logic, then it can, it can answer any type of question that you want. Did, 
Did that do it for you, John? Yes, it did. That's perfect. Thank you very Great. much. Great. Okay. Does anybody else have questions or comments or anything? Just raise your hand and I can I can unmute you. Okay, it doesn't I if if we did get everything answered, um, that's great. Um, so, oh wait, okay, I've got somebody with a hand up, but I'm having trouble unmuting. Okay. Tanis, you've got your hand up. Could you type your question in? Because I'm not able to unmute you for some reason. I'm not sure why. Either through chat or through the questions dialog. And I'm not seeing anything. Okay, this might be something that we want to take offline then. Um, Oh, here we go. Okay, um, she wants to. This person wants to know: Can I download the TRI.net to a disk because security will not let them download to government computers? Daniel, you still there? Option number. Oh, can you hear us? Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> this is this is Kara Kern. I work at EPA with Daniel, and oh, okay. um, I I was just saying that you can download TRI.net to a USB drive, which is option number one that Daniel has up right now, and so you can get around the administrator rights if you need that way. Awesome. Thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Um, anybody else have questions? Okay, hearing none and see. Oh, um, I'm also getting USB are not allowed on most. It, she's from DOD. This person's from DOD. So, yeah. So I I don't know. I don't know well, if uh, you have a workaround for that or not. <laughs> I don't know. I've never tried downloading it onto like directly onto a CD, but she could try it. And if she does, um, I would start with that option one. Okay. Um, the other option is to um, download it to a USB, um, you know, from from a non-DOD computer. Although I don't know if then you have problems with uh, accessing it at work or not. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, that I understand that that can be a problem. <laughs> so, anyone anyone else have questions? Okay, will it work on a computer that's not on a network? Oh, that's not on a, a network? Well, it's, it, that's, yeah, it says work on a computer that's not on a network. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't have to be, um, yeah, it's a desktop application, so it, it will run, uh, you know, from the computer, whether it's uh, hooked into anything or not. Uh, it just won't, uh, you know, it gets it finds updates that it will download uh, periodically, so it won't, uh, it'll run when uh, it's not uh, connected to the internet, but uh, it has to be connected to update. Yeah, and the only, okay. I guess, limitation that I might mention is that it will work on any PC, but it, it doesn't work on Work Mac. on a Mac, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and actually what this person says is no, that's the only workaround for DOD computers is that it will, it, that it, it can be it can be installed on a computer that's not on a network so it's I mean that makes sense to me that sounds like that they just have very tight security yeah. which is unfortunate in the case of tools like this because it would be nice to be able to use it <laughs> so okay are there any other questions or comments or 
anything? Well, in that case, thank you to um, Daniel for um, doing this webinar today. This I actually learned a lot. Um, and uh, thank you to all of you for joining us. And uh, look for a follow-up email in the next day or two because it's going to take me a couple of days to get the archive, um, to get the webinar archive um, posted. But uh, once it does, if you could fill out the evaluation, I'd really appreciate it. So thank you very much for your time, everybody. Have a good afternoon. Thanks, Sarah. Yep, thank you.